most people find their own way through grief and adapt in their own way to the loss of a significant person in their life. But we now know for a small group of people, their grief doesn't integrate in this way. It becomes stuck and continues to impact on their daily functioning. This is called complicated grief. The Irish Hospice Foundation has taken a national lead in providing services for people with complicated grief. We're engaged in some research with Irish practitioners and we provide training, supervision and mentoring for therapists who are interested in training in this work or who are engaged in working with people with complicated grief. The protocol that we use is informed by the complicated grief treatment protocol designed by Dr. Cathy Shear in Columbia University. Uh, and we're very pleased that Cathy Shear is patron of the program here at the Irish Hospice Foundation. Complicated grief therapy is similar in some ways to grief related work uh, in that change is predicated on an ability to form a therapeutic alliance with the client. And practitioners who have some familiarity with trauma work will notice that there is some similarity in some of the techniques that are used. But complicated grief therapy also differs in some ways from other bereavement related work. It's a semi-structured protocol and the therapist takes responsibility for the session for how it's ordered and sequenced. We utilize several particular techniques that are used sequentially going from grief monitoring through to imaginal revisiting, situational revisiting and imaginal conversations. So there's, there's quite a skill in sequencing it and fitting it to, the, to that particular client's needs. The grief story is of course very important um, but in complicated grief therapy there is less emphasis on the telling and retelling of the story. Certainly through the story we build a hypothesis on why the grief has gotten stuck um, but the focus is very clearly on updating the working model in attending to counterfactual uh, beliefs that are sustaining the stuckness in the grief and in opening up with the client to, to a life that again includes some joy and, and competency and confidence. The main challenge for a therapist in using CGT is I think for many therapists who've been trained in a more traditional way, it challenges some of their values or their ways of working. Um, many of us were trained in a way, in a very client focused way, where the client sets the agenda and each session evolves um, as it evolves. CGT is a semi-structured protocol and the therapist is taking responsibility for the pacing and the timekeeping and the agenda. So there's preparation, there's planning, there's creativity in every session. I think it can be difficult, for example, to learn how to, to skillfully and respectfully interrupt a client when they get lost in their grief story, as often happens. I think it can be challenging to conduct imaginal revisiting, particularly when you're learning the protocol. Many therapists have said they, they find it quite daunting. There's a concern about re-traumatizing clients or clients not being able for it. Um, but I think certainly my experience has been, and many therapists have shared this, um, that clients are more resilient than we sometimes give them credit for. And the emotional processing that occurs through a competently done imaginal revisiting, I think can be quite transformative. So, so certainly the, the, the challenges are there, it's different, but I think really what CGT provides as it, as it oscillates between a loss focus and a future focus is that ability to, to, to begin to unstick the grief and to begin to start an integration process. As with any new skill, learning CGT is a learning curve and we all get a bit uncomfortable when we're out of our comfort zone and um, that, that learned competence um, takes a while. So I think what helps best in learning CGT is self-compassion, the same compassion that we speak with clients about 
when you're learning the new protocol, don't forget to apply it to yourself. As Thich Nhat Hanh reminds us, smile, breathe, and go slowly. Beyond that, as, as you come to grips with the protocol and make it your own, there's a couple of things that I do think help and motivate us. The first is to know the research. It's very clear now, the research is quite robust that CGT is more efficacious than other more traditional forms of psychotherapy. So, so when we know better, I think we are called on to, to do better. It's most important to have good supervision. Find a good supervisor who is further along and more skilled than you are and throw, them, throw yourself at their mercy and be willing to, to take feedback and criticism. That's how we all learn. The third thing is having a, a group of fellow CGTers, having a cohort of other people who are learning along with you, where you can share your questions and problems, concerns and triumphs. I think that's tremendous support. And finally, we learn from clients. And I think when you start working with clients and see the, the impact that CGT has with them, I think it's a tremendous motivator to become even more competent in the protocol. Um, but it's always difficult to learn a new way of working. Our, our willingness and flexibility to be open to new ways of doing things serves us well. And in fact, I think it's quite a parallel to what is asked of bereaved people. We have to find a new way of doing things, a new way of moving forward. And I think it's a, a tremendous parallel between our willingness to open up to new ways of working and their willingness to open up to new ways of being in the world. One of the hallmarks of complicated grief is a grief reaction inconsistent with accepted cultural norms. So of course we must bring cultural sensitivity to working with different populations in using CGT. I've worked in both America and Ireland now in this area. Um, and I suppose the first thing I'd say is that grief is grief. I, I don't think it differs hugely. There may be some nuance of difference, but we're still talking about Western culture. There is some research that looks at differences, for example, Koopman's work uh, around differences in, in affect and the avoidance of negative affect. Apparently, American sympathy cards have more positive affect than, than German. Where, where I do think there's difference is um, in interrelationships. I think the, the rules of engagement are different in Ireland. Um, and so because society in some ways um, prescribes grief, I think grief expression can be a little different. And that's probably where we make some adjustment. So apart from the obvious things in the handouts, we've changed some of the, um, the, the spelling or words, vacation, we'd be using holidays, for example. I think probably the, the main difference that there's been in using CGT is in the interpersonal setup might be a little more nuanced, a little less directive, a little more low key, paying particular attention to both what's said, but also what's not said and getting firmer agreement on what's been agreed to um, be accomplished between sessions. Those are some of the new ones. That cultural sensitivity, I think it's important. But in, in, indeed, it's just another lens that we pay attention to. Any good grief work will also be attending to gender difference, difference in grief styles, um, age, relationship to the person who died, etc. And that cultural sensitivity that's important in all grief work also holds through in complicated grief treatment.